Good evening and welcome to a very special edition of previously unseen clips from this series of Would I Lie to You. Joining David Mitchell tonight, Dermot O'Leary, Kirsty Young, Stephen Mangan, Sarah Millican, Richard Osman, Izzy Suti, Greg Rutherford, Joan Bakewell, Jason Manford, Susan Cowman, Mel Gedroich, and John Richardson. And joining Lee Mack tonight, Warwick Davis, Josh Widdicombe, David Harewood, Matt Dawson, Carol Kirkwood, Bob Mortimer, Paul Hollywood, Joanna Scanlon, David O'Doherty, Charles Dance, and Doc Wan. And so to round one, home truths, where our panellists each read out a statement from the card in front of them. To make things harder, they've never seen the card before, so they've no idea what they'll be faced with. And it's up to the opposing team to sort the fact from the fiction. That Charles is first up. <laughs> Whenever I answer the house phone and it's someone I don't wish to speak to, I take a message and pretend I am my fictional handyman, Sean. <laughs> David, so do you answer in Sean's voice all the time? So that in case it's someone you don't want to speak to? I leave a pause and wait for the person on the other end to say hello. You and answer the phone with silence. <laughs> <laughs> and I can usually tell by the hello whether it's somebody I wish to speak to. And if I'm not in the mood to speak to anybody, you know, I say, no, I'm sorry, Charles isn't home, no. Uh, try calling back later, you know. What part of Scotland is Sean from? <laughs> <laughs> it's from the west side of Belfast. Uh, uh, Charles, if you don't want to speak to anyone at all, why pick up the phone? <laughs> well, it's a kind of obsessive thing, you know, it's the insecurity that actors have, you know, you think, oh, my God, it might be a job, you know, I just... <clears throat> well, let's give it a try. I I'll ring you, OK? Yeah. OK. <laughs> Has he not bought a telephone since 1983? <laughs> Hello? Hello? Charles? Hello? Hey, no, this is not Charles. Charles isn't home now at the moment, but if you'd like to leave your number, uh, I'll, I'll get him to call you back when, when he's back, yeah? Charles, are you ill? <laughs> I'm the calling for an ambulance now. <laughs> it's all right. Get in the recovery position. <laughs> oh, God, I'm on my way. <laughs> so, um, what are you thinking, Stephen Mangan? I, I can't see that. Who picks up the phone and doesn't say hello? It's an innate human instinct, isn't it? You can't pick up the phone and go... <laughs> <laughs> I know I'm Sean. <laughs> just... Izzy, what do you think? I don't think you just pick up the phone and not say anything. He might, the person might be able to hear you breathing. It all gets a bit creepy. So which way are you going to go with this, David? I, well, I think we don't think it's true. You think it's a lie? Yeah. OK, Charles, truth or lie? Um, I'm afraid it's a lie. <laughs> uh, Joan Bakewell, it's your turn. Once, when I spotted an ex-boyfriend in a department store, I pretended to be a shop mannequin to avoid having to speak to him. Lee. Well, I know what I want to see. Yeah. D yeah. Oh, Demonstrate. sorry, no, it's probably different. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry. Sorry. You want to see the mannequin, say, oh, right, oh, yeah, whatever. <laughs> do that, yeah. Do that, but then we do mine, yeah? <laughs> I would like to see the mannequin impression. Well, I, I, um, it was in the department where they used to um, sell a lot of fabrics and they used to have mannequins draped in, in just swathes of cloth. So I grabbed a, a swathe of fabric oh. yeah. and just dragged it across my mm. shoulder and it, it was full length. Where was this? Well, we haven't said where it was. It was in Dickens and Jones on Regent Street. Oh, mm. lovely. And when, when was this? Oh, uh, it's a long time ago, early in the 60s. Surely you weren't old enough to shop on your own in the early 60s, Joe? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> so gallant. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding, I believe you. Uh... <laughs> 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 I've said sorry to mannequins before now, in the, in the department stores. Yeah, that. but what were you doing to them? Yeah. <laughs> 
What do you think, Lee? Is it the uh, truth? Warren, what do you think? Do you think there's... I, you, I think she's telling the truth. Really? Do you think... Yeah, I, 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 the I, thing for me is, if you're within six or eight foot of an ex and you don't recognise it because you're static, uh, it just seems... I wouldn't know. I've never been allowed within eight feet of my ex. <laughs> Go on, then. I say it's a, a lie. OK, they're saying it's a lie. Uh, Joan, was it the truth or was it a lie? It's a lie. Ah, <laughs> a lie. <laughs> you're next. I sometimes move bowls and plates from the bottom to the top of the pile so they don't feel left out. Lee? How much time have you got on your hands? <laughs> <laughs> Is this system only for the plates and the bowls, nothing else? Uh, it's for the, the side plates, big plates, uh, yeah, and your regular bowls. So, for example, if the four have gone in the dishwasher and there's, say, two left, I like those two guys to be first up next time, which I, I do understand attributes some kind of personality to an inanimate object. That's why they put you on David's side. <laughs> <laughs> How many bowls are there? It works with all crockery. Wouldn't work with egg cups, though, would it? Because you couldn't really stack them in the same way. No. But that's a good question. Would the egg cups at the back be brought to the front? We only have two, so they get used pretty regularly. They're pretty happy. How about if you only had two plates? Dermot <laughs> can't have two plates. You Thank you, Imagine the sort of dinner parties he has. <laughs> Imagine who's coming to those dinner parties. Th Powell, th Walliams, McPartlin, <laughs> Donnelly. <laughs> and and Dett, the they're cups. using the egg cups as bowls. <laughs> When was the last time, if you, if you can remember, that you actually thought, it's time for a change? Let, let, let's move these fellas out of the way. Let's bring these guys up. How recently were they? Oh, last week. <gasps> really? Last week, yeah. Really? There was one single plate there, and I, and I thought, when did that guy last get used? Yeah. Oh. I'm thinking at least a fortnight. I've got, he's got to go to the top. Dermot, how do you keep track of how many pills and tablets <laughs> you're meant to take in any, <laughs> in any one day? Do you have a system or does your carer really oversee all of that? <laughs> what does your wife think? Weirdly, I only told her about it um, a couple of weeks ago. Are you worried that your wife's doing the same thing? And so... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Very good, yeah. That's a good point. Dermot, you call them guys. Are there no lady plates, lady bowls? No, I mean, that's a catch-all term. Um, some, some bowls have a femininity about them, yeah. But, no, I, 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 they're, they're sort of, they're sort of you know, omnisex. OK. I don't mind being called guys. Well, you do, Joe, you're only one. You're I a guy, yeah? <laughs> yeah. It's a very middle-class thing, I think, calling... Uh, parents who call their children guys. That always makes you want to vomit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's true, isn't it? You guys want to help with the washing up? Oh, yeah. <laughs> the worst one is, come on, guys, let's do the washing up. And they go, you're not my real dad. <laughs> hey, uh. Well, there we are. Um, <laughs> Lee, what do you think? Do Dermot's words have the ring of truth about them? Josh, I think so. Uh, Matt Dawson, which way are you leaning? Lie. So, Lee, you have to have the casting vote. We're going to say that it is, in fact, True. Same true. Dermot O'Leary, were you telling us the truth or were you telling a lie? I was telling you... The truth. Yeah. Oh, well done. Yeah. Give it that. Yeah. It's uh, David O'Doherty. I looked after a neighbour's pet for five days before I realised it was dead. <laughs> David Mitchell and team, what do you think? OK, what, what was the species of pet? His name was Charlie. So, initially, I thought he was going to be a, a spaniel, at the very least. And then it turned out that he was a stick insect. <laughs> right. <laughs> Stick insects, I mean, I'm not, a, I'm not an expert, David, don't require a huge amount of high maintenance upkeep. What was your role meant to be? Step one, greenhouse eucalyptus into the cage. Eucalyptus? Eucalyptus. It wasn't a koala bear. <laughs> <laughs> Step two, uh, water squishy gun. Squish, squish, five. One, two, three, four, five. So you drowned it. <laughs> And because I, I felt that he might be a bit unhappy, I would take him out into the garden for this. And when the wind blew, he had little aerials and they'd 
You know what I mean? Just like a stick insect. Like, so I thought he was alive. Oh, so the, the wind gave you the impression that it was moving. I, I, I'm alive. I'm, I'm dead. Alive. <laughs> That's how you'd know. What's the spraying for? Uh, to simulate the monsoon environment that... <laughs> <laughs> they come from a part of the world where there's a regular, daily, 25-second monsoon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think if I'd taken uh, him out, then obviously I would have seen that... Out of what? The cage. Right. The cage. The cage. Well, like we say cage. The ca he was in a, a tight... Met You're supposed to be on my team. I'm just... I know, but I know that's <laughs> what they're thinking. So I'm trying to help him oh, yeah. on by going, what, you mean that thing that little sticks could get through a cage? Good question. <laughs> it's a very tight, tight Let's mesh. Let's call it a glass cage or a tank. <laughs> <laughs> no, because... Okay. No, they couldn't breathe then. It's no, a... you don't have a lid on it. You have a... You have a oh, actually, no, good point. I was going to say you have... You Lee, have a will mesh you stop <laughs> designing <laughs> hutches for stick insects? <laughs> so how did you eventually know that he was dead? I, I was just... I was putting in the eucalyptus and removing yesterday's eucalyptus, and he was... <laughs> Who had well, been just... eating yesterday's eucalyptus? <laughs> <laughs> no, it was... I, I just take it out, and he was like this, OK? And then when I took it out, it brushed past him, and he just reacted like this. <laughs> <laughs> and you know... Yeah. He... That's a fair description. So what are you thinking, David? Is that truthful or has he made it all up? I don't think it's true oh, because what? I think stick insects sort of live in gangs and aren't as he describes them. Gang. Gangs? Gangs? <laughs> <laughs> <Like that. laughs> What's the collective noun uh, for lots trees. of stick insects? Trees. Uh, so... <laughs> <laughs> do, do you just think it's true? Because I'm, I'm very happy to defer. Uh, it has the ring of truth. To look I, I would go for, I'll say false. Susan says lie. Richard? I say, I say true. You say true. David? Well, I think it's a lie, so... You think it's a lie? You're saying it's a lie. OK, fair enough. David, they think you're telling a lie. Were you telling a lie or were you telling the truth? This is a 100% trustworthy face, and it was telling the absolute... truth. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's David Mitchell. I once got stuck in a cave for an hour after getting the hood of my cagoule <laughs> caught <laughs> on a stalactite in a way I couldn't untwizzle. <laughs> right, caves and stalactites. Lee, Max, team. Well, the bit that we definitely believe about, about that story is cagoule. Cagoule. Yeah. <laughs> We're not doubting cagoule. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Red? And when in the last three weeks did this happen? <laughs> <laughs> This happened uh, when I was uh, a, a boy, a child, a human child. A boy child? child. A boy child. <laughs> <laughs> what cave was it? Uh, it was somewhere in France. Oh, holiday? Yes. Deliberate ploy by parents to get rid of you? <laughs> Give him the baggy cagoule and find a stalactite <laughs> and then run. You were, in, you were in there for an hour? Yeah, I was, I was caught on the, on the stalactite. For an hour? For an hour, Just yeah. Just remember, I mean, again, stalactites go down, right? Stalactites hang down. Hang down. Stalactites, stalactites go up. And the easy way to remember it yeah. is that stalactites have a C in them. Stalactite, C for ceiling. Yeah. Stalagmites have a G, G for ground. No, it's the mm. stalactites come down, isn't it? Tights, 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 come tights, down. tights go up as well. Not, no, they don't. Not when I'm around. <laughs> not when <laughs> 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 I'm around. <laughs> 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 How did you eventually escape? My uh, dad came and released me. So you're with your family on, on this trip? Well, they were sort of... It took them an hour, hour? to find you. <laughs> I would have thought, if I'd have lost you and you'd have been my child, it would have been six or seven days. <laughs> <laughs> right, so what are you thinking, Lee? Could this be true? Mm. What do you think? I'm going to go for a lie. You think it's a lie? Mm. Bob? Lie for me, Lee. Lie. Lie. David? It's a lie. Oh. Yes. <laughs> Uh, Joanna, you're next. I used to vet potential boyfriends by getting them to play me at darts. I could tell more about them in one game than I could on ten dates. David. So, what was it about their darts playing that told you things about their personality? It's dance. It's the sort of liquidity of the way they stand in that position. The liquidity. But was this linked yeah. to you thought their character or their f 
physical prowess, if I can put it that way. It's character. It was all about the character. Well, here's the thing, because one of our panellists is quite accomplished at darts. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's Lee. So, Lee, would, would you demonstrate? Yes. And then we could ask Joanna to mm. analyse and sure, come to her own conclusions. Are you, you're good at darts. I've been known to uh, do double tops. I think you know what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> So what I tend to do is I tend to go like this. That's the line. And now I'll take my dart. Where's the board, sorry? That's a good question. That's what I was thinking. I was, that's the first thing I'd do is I'd go, hang on, there's no board. <laughs> <laughs> because I know what I'm doing. And then I would take the dart, I will lean forward with all the weight on the right leg, keeping it straight, of course, I'm not an idiot. <laughs> I'll then raise the hand, the little finger, note the little finger is in the air. It's weight. If I put it down, I'll fall to the left. <laughs> <laughs> to ballast myself with the finger out. <laughs> and I'd go like that. Might give a cheeky wiggle of the bottom to the lady watching. <laughs> and then... Oh, he's only got an 880 again. I'm going to collect the things. I'm so proud. I'll probably moonwalk to the board. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Christ. I didn't know about that. Usually, Ockies are straight. And then I would grab the darts like that. <laughs> and go, there for you, princess. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I roll. Now then, you've seen a, a, <laughs> a fulsome display. So what would you... What judgments... <laughs> what conclusions would you have come to about Lee from that? You all saw it. There's evidence there of the kind of... It's, it's about a certain sort of flow. Yes. And I think Lee pretends, gives quite a good impression of being a bit of a moron. <laughs> It's true, he does. But, he, he does. But, but, but what I think that belies <laughs> is the fact that underneath it, he is a bit of a kind old softy. Yay! <laughs> Yay! And that's kind of what I'm looking for. So, David, what do you think? Kirsty, what do you think? I would tend to think it's true. Greg? Yeah, I, I sort of think the same. Can, can I say it? I'm sort of 70%. I'm not 100%. So, so how, what percent are you? <clears throat> 50 you're 50. Oh, 50. <laughs> well, the thing is, it could be either. That's the thing. Well, that is... Yeah, I know! <laughs> true. True. OK, so, Joanna, truth or lie? In fact, it is a... No. Oh. Ah. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's Gok. Right. I always use two toothbrushes to brush my teeth, one for the top set, one for the bottom. <laughs> David's team. I <laughs> believe it. <laughs> Can I just check? When you say one for the bottom... <laughs> How do you tell the two apart? Different colours. One pink and one blue. Always pink up top, always blue, blue down below. <laughs> just talk us through it. Right. So you're in the bathroom. Yeah. Yeah. OK, so I'm in the bathroom, I have my shower, I fully body moisturise... I, I can look, vouch uh, for all of this. <laughs> <laughs> and then I go to brush my... And it's, it's quite a big ritual for me, because when I was younger, I was bullied by the way that I look, you see, so... I think it's fair to say, Gog, you weren't bullied by the way you look, were you? Because of the way I looked. Yes, yes so absolutely. It's an yeah. important distinction. Yeah, absolutely. So otherwise, you're being bullied by a concept, aren't you? <laughs> This is true. Thanks for pointing that out. I'm feeling slightly bullied again. Thank you very much indeed. Well, you can so... see how it started, <laughs> don't you? <laughs> so, as I was saying, I was bullied, and one of the big reasons was because of my big teeth and my big smile. And so I was always very, very aware of how big my Why mouth are you looking is. at Stephen, Rob? Um, <laughs> well, I thought they might have met at a support group. I don't... <laughs> <laughs> teeth Anonymous. I don't know what you're talking yeah. about. <laughs> <laughs> um, what do you think? Is he? I think this is definitely true. He's very plausible in his chat, but I just can't... I can't see someone doing that. I'm gonna say lie. OK, so, Gok, truth or lie? It was a lie. Oh. Ah. Oh. That was a <laughs> Richard Osman, you're next. When I was a child, I created a superhero called Snooker Table Man. <laughs> he had three key skills and one mortal enemy. Lee, <laughs> let's start with the obvious. Who's the mortal enemy of Snooker Table Man? Vampire Ray. 
No, it was no. based no. loosely around Ray Reardon. Ray Reardon? <laughs> what were his three skills, Richard? A lot of his skills didn't have an awful lot to do with snooker, I'll be honest with you. He took, he took on the form of a snooker table, because then he could get... Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Just one question to clarify, what the hell are you talking about? <laughs> right, snooker table man, yeah. was, he would take on the form of a snooker table, in the same way that the TARDIS would take on the form of a phone box, it's not crazy, yeah. and he would be able to go into the houses of very rich and successful and famous people. But it's not like the TARDIS, is it? The TARDIS is, is the vehicle that the superhero, mm. for want of a better word, travels round in. Yeah. If you're snooker table man yeah. and there's a child trapped in a, bi a building, they go, what are we going to do? Don't worry, it's snooker table man. <laughs> and then you turn into a snooker table and you go, now what? I go, that's all I can do. <laughs> so what, what, what was his purpose? What did he do? His purpose was to go into the houses of very rich people who were trying to, uh, for various reasons, uh, take over the world. And he would... <laughs> firstly, he would report back on them, because he had, he had wireless transistors in the pockets. Whoa, whoa, whoa. So he would... <laughs> so he would go into the houses of very, very rich Ad people... Right, admit, oh. admit, admit that is a good disguise if you want to get into... No, it's a terrible admit. disguise. Uh, it's a terrible disguise what? unless the person in question has ordered a snooker table. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's the worst disguise in the world. They'll go, the hell did that come from? <laughs> you think any rich person, if they were given a delivery of a snooker table, wouldn't go, oh, lovely, a snooker yes, table? Yes, they would. Yeah. But you didn't say you were given delivery. You said you suddenly appeared in an empty room. <laughs> no, I didn't... So, what do you mean, what, transport So myself? you knock on the door and you go, hello, I'm here, to, I'm here to give you a snooker, no, snooker you table. you are... You are... <laughs> that was it. That was your... <laughs> now you're making it sound ridiculous. <laughs> How did he move around? He didn't move around. That's the beauty of it. People moved around he in. That's snooker tables. <laughs> you know what? I won't tell the rest of the story if you're going to mock me. <laughs> <laughs> what, what are the other powers you haven't told us about? Yeah. yeah. Well, I've given you the two. Mm. And the, the, the third what one was the was second one? Transistors and Parker. The transistors, yeah. The, the ability to transmit information. Who two? And it, two... Oh, goodness <laughs> Who do you think? If we're trying to save the world, who, who do you think he's transmitting to? Steve First, Davis. Firstly, me. <laughs> <laughs> what was your third power, then? The third power was exploding balls. <laughs> <laughs> and how would he and use his exploding balls? In what situation would he want his balls to explode? <laughs> <laughs> Finally, a sensible question. <laughs> if I've received enough information, that the person whose home this snooker table is in is up to no good, is up to nefarious uh, activities. Yes, yes. OK? The next time they're playing a game of snooker, I can then make those balls explode at will. If you were playing this game in Wales, you wouldn't call it snooker. 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 Yeah, snooker. Because we don't, we don't like the oo sound. It's the same with tooth. We'd say tooth. Yeah, and likewise, we don't like the, um, the Welsh. <laughs> Lee, what are you thinking? I think it's a big fat lie. You think it's a lie? I mean, I think he's a he's a large man. He's like a snooker table. I'm not 12 uh, foot by 6 foot, you know that. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm going to say that that was a lie. You think it's a lie? OK, Richard, was it the truth or was it a lie? It was a lie. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's John Richardson. <clears throat> When I was a child, I was told to stop stalking a clown. <laughs> <laughs> Why were you stalking a clown? Because I liked him. How old were you, John? Nine. What was the name of the clown? Dozy David. Dozy David? He was opening a shopping centre where I grew up, and I saw what I believed was genuine magic. What did he do? He did card tricks and he right. juggled and he did jokes, made uh, animals from balloons. What was the nature of your stalking? Physically was... following him or phoning him? Or... Um, I, it was on the phone. How did you get his number? Because I asked for his autograph and he gave me his card. What does he do? Make... I thought for a minute then you were going to say, he gave me your autograph and included his number. <laughs> <laughs> So talk us through then what happens. You well, leave it a day or two, do you? I or... left it a day or two because yeah. I didn't want a lot of... Classy. You know. Give him a chance to get home in his car that keeps falling apart. <laughs> <laughs> so what did you do? Talk us through the first conversation. 
Well, no, that's the thing. He never answered his phone. Uh, so I used to leave messages. Uh, hey, David, it's John here from Lancaster. Just worrying if you're coming back and doing any shows. Or OK. Give us a ring, we'll see what happens. He never rang back, so I had to ring him again, didn't I? Right. <laughs> <laughs> and how long did this go on for? Well, a few weeks. How many Ooh, times how in often? those few weeks did you ring him? I'd, I would imagine it was something like every other day. And was it the same messages or was it getting steadily more menacing? Were you going... <laughs> <laughs> now, listen here, Dozy Dave. <laughs> You don't you, call me yeah, back. I know where you live. I've got your address on the chart. I've got your number. Yeah. I'll come round your house. I know where you keep your balloons. Yeah. <laughs> you don't call yeah. me. I'll get a bucket of confetti and I'll <laughs> throw it right in your face and you'll think it's water. Yeah. And what's worse than that? Just watching you. Yeah, what's worse? I'll, I'm going to come, I'm gonna come round and mend your car. Did, did, this carry, <laughs> did this carry on long enough that the message your voice was getting deeper and deeper, wasn't it? <laughs> No, listen here. <laughs> this has been 23 years. <laughs> uh, how'd you make a poodle out of a loo? <laughs> how did it end then, John? It ended very upsettingly when his uh, wife or girlfriend answered the phone <gasps> and said, David says, will you stop calling the house? Oh. oh, this is a heartbreaking oh, story. <laughs> Lee, uh, what do you think? Could that tale of woe be true? <laughs> I think it fits his character profile. Sweet. I think it's probably true. So, it, David? I think it's true. True? For okay. me. Yeah. We'll say you, you all are... think it's true. John, true. were you telling the truth or were you telling a lie? I was telling a truth. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Lee, how do you know Ian? This is Ian. He is my supermarket delivery driver who accidentally got... I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> I just want you to know this is absolutely true. <laughs> right? But they do insist that we say it exactly the way it happened. So, exactly here we happened. go. Right. Um, this is David. No, what's your name? <laughs> <laughs> Lee, yeah? perhaps you'd like to explain how you know Ian. Never met him. <laughs> This is Ian. <laughs> this is Ian. This is Ian. Listen, I think it's fair to say the opposition have got it down to 50-50. <laughs> so, um, Lee, how do you know Ian? This is Ian. <laughs> <laughs> Favor, could you sell a tape that to your face? <laughs> right. This is Ian. He is the supermarket delivery driver who accidentally trapped me in the back of his van and drove me to his next drop off point. Right. And finally, uh, David, what is Lee to you? Not Lee, sorry. 